Eastward is an indie game released on September 16th, 2021 that follows John and Sam as they go from town to town fighting weirdo monsters and meeting even weirdo peeps. The gameplay consists of talking to a lot of those peeps and also exploring, finding things, fighting stuff, and even cooking things. But Eastward has some pretty interesting glitches and tricks that I thought it'd be pretty cool to kinda show off some of them, so hey, here are some Eastward glitches and tricks. Before we start, I want to mention that the area I'm going to be showing off a lot of these glitches in is located at the bottom of the map from chapters 3 to 5. So let's start off with what's known as cooking storage. This glitch lets you move around while being able to cook stuff, which normally only keeps you at the stove. To perform this glitch, just stand in front of a stove, pause, then highlight the reset current level button. Then, in a sorta quick succession, you want to press A, unpause during the fadeout, then mash A. Obviously, I'm on a PlayStation controller, so just, you know, same thing. You also don't have to be fast mashing, you can even just press A after the unpause, but mashing just seems to be easier. Once it fades back in, the cooking menu should pop up while you're able to move around, so there you go. But this kind of brings us to our next glitch, which is infinite cooking. So as the name suggests, we're actually able to cook infinitely by being able to cook a dish, but not use up the ingredients. And this is because of our dear friend, the reset current level button. So what you want to do for this is get cooking storage and then start cooking something. After you do the slot machine thing, the little cooking song will start where at this point you can just pause and reset the level. Once it's done, it'll show off the dish and put it in your inventory like usual, but you'll notice that once it goes back to the cooking menu, you'll still have the original number of ingredients, making it possible to infinitely cook any dish. As long as you have the ingredients, of course. You're kind of out of luck if you wanted to make a dish that uses multiple of the same ingredient and you only have one, so that kind of sucks. Or does it? Thanks again to our buddy the reset level button, we can now do ingredient duping. To dupe ingredients, you get cooking storage, then select the ingredients you want more of, but don't cook them. While in this menu, you want to just pause and reset level, and that's pretty much it. You should have one more ingredient than you previously did. Unless you did multiple of the same ingredient, then you should have that many more. You have to be careful though, because if you were to reset level again, the count actually goes back to normal on that second reload. So, I suggest checking to see if the dupe worked, walking to a load zone, and then coming back in so it gets properly set. I'm gonna repeat the steps again, so don't worry. So, 1. Get cooking storage. 2. Choose the ingredients you want more of, but don't cook them. 3. Pause and reset level normally. And 4. Check the stove, exit, and leave the area, then come back in, and it should be properly duped now. Now, all of these cooking glitches are pretty interesting, but now I want to get into one of the biggest tricks you can do in this game, which is to clip through walls and go out of bounds. It's actually fairly easy to go out of bounds or clip through walls in this game, and all you need are some bombs. Let's go through some doors first though, since I think it's the easiest one to practice and it looks like this. Before trying this out though, I do want to recommend that if you're on the Steam version, you should remap your controller's d-pad to function as a joystick. That way you can easily get straight facing angles or, you know, just use the keyboard. If you're on console, you can still get straight angles on joystick, although it is a bit tougher, but you can still do the trick. So, with a straight up angle against the door, stop and place a bomb. Then, turn around 180 degrees in place, so I just like to do a quick down tap on my d-pad. As John turns around, you'll notice that Sam wants to reposition, so just wait for her to stop moving. Once you notice Sam is done moving, you'll want to switch to her, wait for John to stop repositioning, if he even moves at all, then switch back to him and it should clip you right through. The key here is making sure that John himself doesn't reposition when switching to Sam, as any slight movement from him will make it so you don't clip through the door, and you'll have to try again. What's weird is that sometimes he'll just move away, and I don't know why, but retrying the trick doesn't take too long. That being said, this is a fun and easy way to clip through almost any door, and you can even repeat the process when clipping back again, but instead you hold down on the door, turn around with up, then do the switching to clip. Now, other ways to clip are by going through actual walls, however, not all walls are the same. 
Walls can be as thin as what seems like a pixel wide, and other walls can be a huge old blocks of solidness. Using the debug menu on PC, we can actually see the hitboxes of certain walls and like, bruh, it's actually insane how different these walls are. Quick note here, to turn on debug mode on the Steam version, you want to add dash dash no underscore more underscore cabify to the launch options, and also create an empty file called eastward underscore debug in all caps in the content slash game folder. Just make a text document here and then remove the .txt extension. Once in the game, you can use the slash to enable it. What's weird with these thin walls too is that you can sometimes even clip out without even switching characters. Just the act of turning around in place is enough for you to clip through. A good example is here in chapter 2. To clip like this, you want to be a bit back from the edge, place a bomb while you move up, that way you sort of walk through the bomb since it isn't grounded yet. Once you reach the wall, just do a turnaround and it should clip. It's kind of finicky and sometimes it won't clip you, but it does work. If you try placing a bomb right up against these thin line walls, you'll notice that the bomb actually gets placed in front of you instead of behind you like they do for doors. This is probably because it's not even a wall, it's just sort of a line keeping you in bounds, but I thought it was interesting to note. Speaking of interesting, you can actually clip through some doors and walls without character switching. Using two bombs and a glitch known as charge storage, we can actually clip through doors without having to switch characters. This is especially useful in Chapter 1 since there's this door that leads to a later part of the area and you only have John to control, but by clipping through, you skip about 4-5 to five minutes of gameplay. So first thing I need to show off is charge storage. In the game, you're able to swing your pan around as a weapon, and if you hold the attack button, you'll stay in place while you charge up a big hit. Once you let go of the button, you'll lunge forward and perform a big swing. This is useful for launching bombs, but this is all the charge is really useful for. With charge storage though, much like the cooking storage from before, you'll be able to move around while you have a charged up attack stored. To perform charge storage, you want to hold attack and then interrupt it with a menu. This could be either the backpack, weapon, or pause menus. I prefer to use the backpack or weapon menus as I find it easier to press attack than L1 or R1. Like most tricks, this one is a little wonky though, with the timing of the attack button and menu changing as time goes on. Sometimes, you'll want to press both buttons right at the same time, while other times, you'll have to press attack, wait ever so slightly, then press the menu button. I have no clue why this is the case other than maybe some weird FPS thing going on. You can use John's animation as a sign on whether you need to be pressing the menu button earlier or later. If you see him swing right before the menu pops up, then that means you need to be pressing the buttons closer to each other. If no animation happens and he doesn't get charge storage, then you'll want to separate the button presses a little bit. You'll know you have charge storage because the aiming line pops up for a second without John doing anything, but then he'll suddenly start glowing with the charging lights, and you'll start to hear the swishing of the charge. <clears throat> this is charge storage, as from here you'll be able to freely move around while having a charge stored up. A funny animation glitch happens where if you let go of the charge while you're moving, John will stay in the swinging position while you're still moving around. Anyway, going back to clipping through the store, it's fairly simple and it looks like this. So to set this up, you want to get right up against the door, turn around in place and do 6 swings without holding a direction, just let John move down by himself as you attack. After the 6 swings, you want to turn back around, get charge storage, then place 2 bombs. The timing from here is going to take a bit of practice, but you'll want to attack, then move forward with the bombs, having the front bomb land on you and pray that you clip through the door. I say pray because, on the PC version, I swear this trick is a lot more inconsistent than on Switch. I found this clip on the Switch version of the game, and it works almost every time on there than on the PC. It still works, but it feels like it could be related to that FPS thing I mentioned earlier, where depending on the frames, it'll either clip you or not. This problem only really happens with this door specifically, every other normal door clips basically first try. Later on in the game, you unlock a new bomb type known as a floater bomb. Casually, these are used to blow up things that are further away, especially over big gaps as regular bombs just fall off ledges. These floater bombs are great for clipping out just as well as regular bombs. These floater bombs take a slight second to fully spawn in. This is useful since floater bombs have such a big hitbox that if placed in the right way, you can clip through a lot of smaller walls with just John himself. For example, here in chapter 8a, you can skip pretty much most of the main areas by going out of bounds. 
The easiest setup to clip out with floater bombs here is to place John's hair swirl thing right in the middle of the edge. Once you're here, you want to place the floater bomb then immediately hold straight up. If timed correctly, you should be able to pop right out. When it comes to clipping back down or towards the left or right, I find it easier to just find a corner instead and then do a different setup. I get about this far from the ledge, using John's pan as a visual for spacing, then place a floater bomb and move immediately. Again, if done right, this should clip you right through. Moving on to clipping through actual walls, you can do the same thing as what's done for door clips. You need to make sure that the bomb is placed in a decent spot, usually around here, then you can try character switching. Now, what about one block wide walls? And what do I mean by one block wide? So real quick, if we use the debug mode again, you can see that some walls are just these huge green walls, but others are defined by the green walls, but they also have these red blocks that indicate there's a wall. I honestly don't know why only some of these have red blocks, but for the ones that do show them, it makes it easy to tell if it's going to be easy to clip through. Well, for these one block wide walls, it can be safe to assume that doing the same setup for doors is probably fine, but they can be a bit finicky sometimes. My theory here is that it might be one block wide, but they still might be ever so slightly bigger or smaller. If there's a corner, it honestly feels easier to place a bomb and just switch without even turning around. You want to switch super quickly though, like one frame after the other. This clip here in chapter 7b is one that feels a bit easier to me if you just do a quick switch to clip out. Basically, it boils down to just messing around with which way of clipping works best with different walls. There's a wall in chapter 1 that's one block wide but you barely don't clip out, unless you use two bombs for whatever reason. And then some walls are two blocks wide, and while I think I have clipped through these, it's a lot harder, but there's still another way to go out of bounds. So, this game uses what's known as loading zones to take you from one area to the next. What's interesting about these loading zones is that you can do some pretty funky stuff with them. I know we were talking about going out of bounds, but I want to go on a quick side tangent on these load zones because this is a glitches and tricks video after all. So super quick glitch with these load zones is that if you reset level, unpause, and walk into one of these load zones at a certain time, something weird happens. When the level fades back in, John and Sam are completely gone and the camera just stays in one spot. You can't switch or even move and the only thing you can do is to quit to the title screen. I honestly have no idea what even happens here other than to theorize that it's potentially sending you to the coordinates of the next room but keeping you in the same level loaded or something. Now back to going out of bounds. These loads have an interesting mechanic on them where whenever you separate John and Sam to use them individually and you go into one of these zones with one of them, it'll sort of store them in that spot until the other character goes there or until they're together again. If you were to switch back to the character that went into that zone, they come walking back out. This is where the next glitch comes in. If you detach from Sam as John, place a floater bomb as you walk towards the load, then switch back to John so he walks out, he'll be stopped by the floater bomb while still inside the load. From here, you can call Sam back to you and now both will be able to go through the load and beyond the other side. A lot of the times, this means that you're able to go out of bounds since no walls exist on that side, although this isn't always the case because some levels do enclose the other side. Still though, a lot of these areas don't close it off and you're able to freely walk out of bounds from here. The way you walk out of these loads seems to differ slightly for each one, which means having to do slightly different setups. One main area where this saves a lot of time is in chapter 3. In this chapter, you're tasked to find a slime furnace and on your way there, you're also supposed to find the flamethrower. Now, you could technically skip the flamethrower by just door clipping here and only obtaining the slime furnace, but with this different method of going out of bounds, we can now get both items while skipping many sections required to get to these places. It was theorized for a bit here that maybe it was just faster to skip the flamethrower by doing out of bounds shenanigans in any place that required the flamethrower, like this area in chapter 5, but now with this newish out of bounds trick, we're able to get both fairly quickly and easily. This would have been where the video ended if it weren't for the fact that a new update came out that added some quality of life stuff, like finally being able to fast forward through cutscenes. This is a very nice addition, especially since they had added a way to replay through certain chapters. Just as a quick ramble, but it also kind of leads to our next glitch, is that this fast forwarding saved around 3 freaking hours in the any% percent run, which is just insane. However, there's a glitch with this fast forwarding that potentially saves even more time. This glitch is known as full game speed up. As the name suggests, and as you can probably see on screen, the entire game gets completely sped up. This isn't some editing effects or anything. This saves so much time, especially in areas where you're just walking slowly or there's a lot of distance to cover. To perform full game speed up, go up to something that has text or get into a cutscene. 
Next, we're gonna do something similar to the reset level strats where we unpause during a fade out, but this time it's going to be on the quit to title screen button. During the fade out on quitting to title screen, you want to unpause and hold R while it's fading out, and if it's done correctly, the whole game will now be sped up. It's especially apparent when going through the title screen again, as you can immediately tell how much faster the screen is, as well as inputs being way faster while menuing. It's so hard to navigate through certain parts of the game though, especially points where there's a lot of enemies to traverse through, or ones that you have to kill to progress. Also, the map, at least visually, gets really messed up, it's kinda weird. But yeah, this glitch is kind of insane and caused a bit of a split to occur on the leaderboards, as it seemed better to have a category that allows the glitch and one that bans it. Who knows if they'll patch it in the future, but man, this glitch is really fun to mess around with, especially when doing runs. This glitch makes it so that basic movement now becomes more difficult, but definitely more rewarding to pull off smoothly. Well, this is the end of the video, so thank you for watching, and hopefully you learned a thing or two about cool glitches and tricks for this great indie game. I've got some ideas for more Eastward content, like maybe taking a look at each chapter individually, and showing off skips you can do for every chapter, but aside from that, I for sure want to do more glitch videos on other games, especially on the one that I'm more familiar with. I also have some plans to maybe make some Monster Hunter content, as I've been really enjoying it a lot lately. So yeah, thanks for watching, and subscribe if you want. <laughs>